Hi, I'm Joachim for Statistics Globe and in this video I'll explain how to find the maximum and minimum length of the character strings in a data frame. In the video I'm going to show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with the lines 2 to 4 of the code. So if you run these lines of code you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data set is appearing and if you click on this data frame a new window is opened which is showing the structure of our data and as you can see our data frame contains three rows and three columns which are called x1, x2 and x3 and in the data frame cells we can find different character strings with a different length. So let's assume that we want to find out the length of all character strings in one of the columns of our data frame. Then we can apply the nchar function as you can see in line 6 of the code and within the nchar function I'm specifying the name of the data frame, then I'm using the dollar operator and then I'm specifying the name of the column in which I want to check for the length of the character strings. So in this case I'm checking for the number of characters in each string in the column x1. So if you run line 6 of the code you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the numeric values 4, 2 and 6 are returned and these values correspond to the number of characters in each string in the column x1. So the first string in the column x1 Lala contains 4 letters, the second string Lo contains 2 letters and the third string Le 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 contains 6 letters. So as you have seen in this first example we can apply the nchar function to return all character string length of a column. However it is also possible to return the length of the character strings in all of the columns and we can do that by combining the apply function and the nchar function as you can see in line 8 of the code. So if you run this line of code you can see at the bottom that a matrix is returned and this matrix contains the character string length corresponding to each data frame cell in our input data. So as you can see the first column contains the same numerical values as the vector that we have returned in the previous example. However in this matrix you can also see the length of the other columns in our data set. So based on these examples you can already see the length of each cell in our data frame. However we have not identified the maximum and minimum values of our character strings yet and this is what I will show you in the next example starting in line 10 of the code. So in this line of code I am applying the max function in combination with the nchar function to find out the maximum length in the column x1. So if you run line 10 of the code you can see at the bottom that the value 6 is returned or in other words the longest character string in the first column x1 contains 6 elements. Similar to that we can apply the min function as you can see in line 12 of the code. So the minimum length of the character strings in our column x1 contain 2 letters. As in the beginning of this tutorial we can also use the apply function to return the maximum length all columns in our data set. So if you run line 14 of the code you can see that the character string with the longest length in the column x1 contains 6 letters in the column x2 the longest character string contains 5 letters and in the column x3 the longest character string also contains 6 letters. And similar to that when we exchange the max function by the min function as you can see in line 16 of the code we can return the minimum length of the character strings in our columns. So in the first two columns the smallest character strings contain two letters and in the third column the shortest character string contains three letters. So in this video I have explained how to count the number of letters in character strings in a data frame. However in case you want to learn more on this topic you could check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on the homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail and I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video. Furthermore if you have liked the video I would be very happy if you leave me some positive feedback in the comments 
and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.